Hello again, everybody. Marv Parker here at the starting line of the United States Safe Driving Rally. Let me emphasize one point. This is not a race. Its purpose is to demonstrate the difference between aggressive driving and defensive driving. And I'm Gary Jackson at the finish line. The National Safe Driving Rally starts in San Francisco. Here we find some of the toughest city driving in the world, with steep hills and crowded downtown streets. The rally route continues on fast-moving freeways to the coastal highway. Down the coast are hairpin turns on hazardous mountain roads, then back up onto Highway 280 for higher speed driving until we reach San Jose where our rally concludes. The winner will be determined by the overall elapsed time while on the course. But here's a very significant wrinkle. A full point will be added to the overall score posted by a driver for each traffic or safety infraction noted by the official observer. The driver with the lowest score will be presented with the National Safe Driving Rally Trophy at the end of the demonstration. Our contestants, two well-trained professional drivers. Jack in the gray sedan will use aggressive driving tactics. He won't knowingly break the law, but he will drive as though late for an important business appointment and trying to make up the time on the road. Woody in the blue sedan will use defensive driving practices at conservative speeds. We've posted an official observer in each car. They'll hand their written progress reports to our scorers at checkpoints along the rally route. They will relay the information to the scoring station here at the finish line so we can keep you posted during the event. Many accidents are caused each year by equipment failure on improperly maintained cars, particularly the brakes and tires. Both of our cars are well maintained and are identical in equipment to guarantee equal conditions for both drivers. Well, it looks as if we're just about ready to go. And they're off. The safe driving rally is underway. It is obvious right away that we have two drivers with very different styles. In fact, they represent two entirely different ways of relating to the road. The aggressive driver. And the defensive driver. Aggressive drivers are usually overconfident, though not necessarily competent on the road. You may think that an offensive driver gains by pressure driving like this. Shooting through every opening, dodging from lane to lane, racing every light. Well, we'll see. We're coming up to the first checkpoint. Here's our first report from the field. It seems that Jack is pulling ahead, but has already collected several points for traffic infractions. This kind of driving can cause accidents. Defensive drivers, on the other hand, are skillful, safe, and considerate. To drive defensively means two things. First, always make allowances for the erratic offender. Look ahead. Second, anticipate what they might do to cause you trouble. Leave yourself an out. Always put safety first, rather than arbitrarily asserting your driving rights at all times. If your visibility is blocked at an intersection, let the vehicle that is blocking you run interference for you. You know, defensive drivers leave their personal problems outside the car and are always aware of traffic conditions, vehicles, and pedestrians. Aggressive drivers, on the other hand, seem to thrive on the excitement of pressure driving, but their driving causes problems and stress for others on the road. There are some other types of drivers you need to watch out for, and I'll be talking about them during the course of the rally. Here's one we've all been behind. The dawdler. Dawdlers are inattentive and distracted. 
they are usually thinking about something else. Music, their jobs, their spouses. Their attention may be anywhere, but it's not on their driving. And that's dangerous for everyone near them on the road. As a defensive driver, you need to watch out for other drivers who are aggressive and inattentive. You know, for many poor drivers, the power of their cars isn't under the hood. It's in their head. But if you're considerate of other drivers, they're likely to be considerate of you. Courtesy is contagious. Always let others know what you intend to do. Here are some other safe driving tips. When encountering poor driving conditions, you should slow down and plan ahead to avoid potential trouble, especially in bad weather. Turn your headlights on early. Darkness is the most common poor driving condition drivers encounter. The aggressive driver is typically impatient. He'll try to make good time even under hazardous conditions. Aggressive drivers are dangerous to themselves and to other drivers. Another dangerous driver is one that's tired and sleepy. Fatigue drivers may be good drivers normally, but when they're road weary, their abilities are diminished. Their recognition and reaction time is slowed down. If you're driving when you're fatigued, you should compensate by being extra alert and attentive. Stop regularly and stretch your legs when necessary. Be safety conscious. Back to you, Marv. You can stay safe by maintaining a cushion of space around your vehicle. Under ideal conditions, you should stay two seconds behind the car in front of you. Two seconds gives you up to a second to recognize a problem and a second to respond. You can calculate the two second distance by picking out an object as the car in front of you passes it and counting two seconds. If it takes you two seconds to come to the same spot, you're at a safe distance at any speed. In adverse conditions, or if you're tired, the following distance should be increased to three seconds. Vehicles carrying heavy loads should leave a four second distance because it will take them a greater distance to stop. Here's a report from our second checkpoint. It seems that Jack's car has opened up a clear lead in terms of time, but the point score for Woody is very low so far. And now here's Gary with some other safe driving tips. For freeway driving, in addition to the two second rule, you should leave enough room so you can easily see the road ahead of the vehicle in front of you. On super highways, you should be conscious of positioning your vehicle. Be aware of the space around you in all directions. Try to stay between the clusters of traffic. Always have an escape route on one side. If another driver takes advantage of your space shield, ease off and get ready to slow down. If you get boxed in, slow down and restore your space shield. And by the way, use the fast lane only for passing because that's where the aggressive drivers are going to be. But you have to stay alert. Aggressive, insensitive drivers have a habit of appearing from nowhere.
Drivers under the influence are the most dangerous of all. They can be drunk or stoned, or in some cases, both. Their control, especially their reaction time and depth perception, is never as good as they think. After exceeding the speed limit, driving under the influence is the second leading cause of fatal accidents. This kind of accident is preventable. When a nearby car enters or exits the freeway, you should slow down to make room, and if necessary, safely change lanes. Be attentive. Keep your eyes moving constantly, never looking at anything longer than you need to. Check the traffic behind you every five to eight seconds. Look ahead to where you'll be in 10 to 12 seconds. Make sure you can see others and they can see you. When you change lanes, signal your intentions, use your mirror, and quickly glance over your shoulder before making any move. When exiting, you should give plenty of warning to the drivers behind you and slow down in advance of the off-ramp. And here's our first car across the finish line. Jack has completed the course in the shortest amount of time, but we still have to adjust his score for any possible penalties. How was your ride? Oh, great. Piece of cake. Any problems out there? Not at all. Nice that, run. That's great. And now here is our second contestant. Woody has a slower speed, but all indications are that he has very few, if any, penalty points. Congratulations. How'd the ride go? It was beautiful. We enjoyed it. Any problems out there? None at all. That's terrific. I've just been handed the results. These for the safety conscious driver in the blue sedan. 109 minutes for 109 points. Zero points for any driving infractions. That gives his total 109 points. For the driver in the gray sedan, and even 100 minutes to make the drive, the difference, nine minutes. But he had seven dangerous lane changes, five instances of following too closely, and nine stretches of exceeding the speed limit, any one of which could have gotten him a traffic citation. That brings his total to 121 points. Our winner, the safety conscious Woody. We want to emphasize that the National Safe Driving Rally was a demonstration using professional drivers. The aggressive driving tactics used by Jack are unsafe. Were the nine minutes he gained worth the added risk? We think not. Defensive driving techniques are basic and simple. The trick is to use them until they become second nature. Let's review the steps. Always be on the lookout for erratic drivers. Keep as much clear driving space around you as possible. Don't tailgate. Don't let others crowd you. Maintain a cushion of space. Keep your eyes moving constantly to assess the driving situation well ahead. Only by allowing yourself ample space and planning how to keep it can you properly protect yourself. Always stay alert. Be willing to let the aggressive driver have their way. Be smart. Be a defensive, safe driver. And that's the United States Safe Driving Rally for this year. I'm Marv Parker. Till next year, drive safely.
of us, it's second nature. Driving. Getting behind the wheel is so commonplace, we often forget the responsibility involved. After all, moving a 4,000 pound object at speeds of up to 70 miles per hour can be a risky activity. Each year, more than 40,000 people are killed in motor vehicle crashes and over 3 million are injured. We hear a lot about the causes, driving while intoxicated, speeding, but there's another factor we don't often consider, probably because it's so commonplace, driving while distracted. Distracted driving involves any activity that takes a driver's attention away from the road, like talking on the phone, eating, or changing radio stations. Even careful drivers are sometimes distracted. In a recent survey, 62% of drivers admitted to playing with the radio while driving. 57% said they sometimes eat while driving. And 44% said they pick up things on the floor or between the seats. Research indicates that inattention and distractions like these may play a role in 20 to 30% of all motor vehicle crashes. And as the use of cell phones and other electronic devices increases, the risk of distraction also grows. To find out why distractive driving is so risky, we need to look at it mathematically. Say you're traveling 45 miles per hour. If you look down for only two seconds, you're driving blind for a distance of 132 feet, almost half the length of a football field. If danger presents itself during those two seconds, you have a much lower chance of responding in time. If you weren't distracted, it would take about 170 feet for you to react, hit the brake, and bring the car to a stop. Add on the 132 feet of highway that you traveled blindly, and you can see why stopping in time becomes almost impossible. In this program, we'll talk about some of the common distractions facing drivers, and we'll learn ways to reduce the risk of being distracted on the road, even for an instant. Hey. Yeah, I just loaded the last of it. Yeah, I'm leaving right now, and I'll uh, call you from the road. All right, bye. down. I need a tow. When cell phones were introduced, they gave drivers the opportunity to report crashes or summon help from any location. Today, cell phones have turned out to be a mixed blessing. Research indicates that cell phone use is responsible for a growing number of traffic fatalities each year. Deliveries, this is Michael. No, I'm already on a run right now. Most driver distractions are visual. And indeed, cell phones present a visual distraction whenever they are being dialed or answered. But cell phone use is made even riskier because of the mental distraction they create. No, he has to do it. I'm already, I'm, you set me on it. I'm already, whoa. Talking with someone we cannot see causes us to focus even more intently on the conversation. Our minds are not on the task at hand, driving. Hang on just a second. Let me put you on speaker. I'm already on a run. Even hands-free, no, voice-activated phones create the same kind of dangerous mental no. distraction. Having a phone in the car can be a lifesaver during emergencies, but good judgment is required to use phones safely. You have two new messages. To listen to your messages, press 1. Most cell phone providers offer voicemail, which can answer calls you receive while driving. Yeah, I need to report an accident. It's at the corner of... If you must make a call from the car, perhaps to report a crash or to get directions, stop where it is safe and legal to park. Avoid pulling off to the side of the road, which can be dangerous to you and other drivers. You could also ask a passenger to make the call for you. Don't try to fit a call into a stop at a traffic light. Chances are the call will last longer than you think. In addition, you should always stay focused on your surroundings even when you're stopped in traffic. Be aware of the local laws in your area concerning cell phones. 
Some states have restrictions on handheld phones, headsets, and ear clips, and new legislation is constantly being introduced. Cell phones aren't the only devices that can interrupt our concentration. The stereo, air conditioner, speedometer, and other controls can be distractions too. In fact, they're probably the riskiest distractions because they're so commonly used. For instance, adjusting the radio or CD player is a major cause of distracted driving crashes. To minimize the risk, you should be very familiar with the controls in your vehicle and be able to use them without eye contact. Buckle your safety belt and adjust your seat and mirrors before you begin driving. Program your radio to the stations you like so you won't have to adjust the controls while you're driving. Finally, be cautious of new in-vehicle devices, such as navigation systems, laptop computers, and onboard communication systems. Straight address. I need directions to 155 State. Although automobile manufacturers are working to create safe devices controlled by touch or voice, many of these features can still be distracting. Remember, anything that takes your eyes or your mind off the road, even for a moment, is a distraction. Always remember to only enter information when the vehicle is stopped. Someone driving aggressively near or around you can obviously be a distraction, especially if you focus on them instead of your driving. The sooner you spot an aggressive driver, the more time you have to get out of the way and avoid danger. Beware of someone who makes frequent lane changes, runs red lights, or tailgates. These are major causes of vehicle crashes and should always be taken seriously. Nothing is more infuriating than someone who recklessly puts other people at risk. But responding to an aggressive driver takes your mind off the road, putting you and your passengers in even greater danger. Difficult as it may be, you need to set aside your own ego when it comes to dealing with aggressive drivers. The best way to respond to aggressive drivers is to get out of their way. Make every effort to let them pass you. Learn to drive. What is your problem? Don't make eye contact with aggressive drivers. Attention is what many of them are looking for. Others can become enraged if you give them a mere glance. Ignore gestures and refuse to return them. Don't race with other drivers or challenge them by speeding up or passing them. These actions will endanger not only yourself, but innocent bystanders as well. Hello, yes. I'd like to report a reckless driver on Route 2. Reckless driving or aggressive behavior should be reported to the police. Get as much information about the vehicle as you can, such as the make, model, and license number. Stop to call the police or ask a passenger to call using a mobile phone. By the way, it's much easier to prevent our own driving from becoming aggressive if we follow a few guidelines. Plan ahead by allowing yourself plenty of time to reach your destination while driving the legal speed limit. Avoid listening to music that gets you pumped up. Studies suggest that certain kinds of music can increase the risk of a driver becoming aggressive. Use a map or suggestions from friends to find shortcuts that are less congested. If all else fails, just relax and accept that you're going to be late. Anyone who has traveled in a vehicle with a child or infant knows how quickly a distraction can develop. Taking a few simple precautions will make the ride safer for you and your young passengers. We can take the balloon to the park with us tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to put the car seat in. Okay. First and foremost, all children should be properly restrained in the correct child safety seat according to age or with a safety belt. Not only is an unrestrained passenger at great risk in the event of a crash, but children climbing or crawling near the driver can create a serious distraction. For the same reason, pets should also be restrained in the back seat of a vehicle, either in a pet carrier or in a specially designed pet restraint system. 
All children aged 12 and under should ride in the back seat of a vehicle. This is the safest place for small passengers. Make small children and infants as comfortable as possible by attaching a sunshield to the window and by placing a pillow or neck roll around the infant's head. If possible, have an adult sit in the back seat to watch and occupy the child. Here's your bunny. Plan ahead to keep babies and small children entertained by giving them toys with no small parts or choking hazards. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. Don't turn around to look in the back seat while you're driving, even if a child cries. Keep your focus on the road. You can calm crying spells by playing children's music on the stereo. If necessary, Park in a safe place and take a few moments to reassure the child. We're almost there, honey. Remember that riding can be uncomfortable and frustrating for kids. With a little forethought, most pint-sized distractions can be solved or prevented. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, drowsiness is a primary causal factor in at least 100,000 motor vehicle crashes each year. While not a distraction in itself, being drowsy can take your attention away from potential hazards on the road. To reduce the risk, it's important to recognize when you are fighting sleep and to know what to do if you are too sleepy to drive. Those most at risk for drowsy-related crashes are young people, especially young men and shift workers driving home late at night or early in the morning. However, anyone can become drowsy on the road, especially between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m., when most drowsy-related crashes occur. Obviously, the best way to prevent drowsiness on the road is to get enough sleep ahead of time, especially before long drives. Avoid drinking alcohol or taking any sedating medications before driving. Try not to drive between midnight and 6 a.m. and avoid driving well into the period when you're usually asleep. Instead, use public transportation or ride with someone who is well rested. To recognize drowsiness in yourself or others, watch for drifting across lanes or near the shoulder of the road, having trouble following a conversation or keeping a train of thought, seeing shadows or glowing lights, or mistaking an object for something it is not. And especially, nodding off or forgetting what has happened during the last few minutes. If you feel drowsy, stop driving as soon as possible. Find a motel or a safe rest area and sleep as long as you can. Give yourself a few minutes to wake up before getting back on the road. Caffeine can also help. Two cups of brewed coffee will improve alertness for 30 to 60 minutes. You can also do some light exercises or snack on high energy foods like soft drinks or candy bars. These are only short term solutions, giving you enough energy to find a motel or call a ride. Nothing is a substitute for adequate sleep. Business travel can create its own set of distractions. Business travelers often have to drive unfamiliar rental cars on strange roads. In addition, they can be rushed, overworked, or stressed out. As a business traveler, you should be extra cautious of potential distractions. Look over your itinerary and intended route before getting started. Keep a map and phone numbers in a convenient place. If you rent a vehicle, take time to familiarize yourself with the controls. Be conservative when braking and steering, allowing extra time for differences between the rental vehicle and your own. Allow extra time to get to a meeting, especially if the route is unfamiliar. Work-related stress and driving are not a good combination. Relax by listening to soothing music. Not only will these steps reduce the risk of a distracted driving crash, they'll also make business trips go more smoothly. So excited about this trip, I hope we didn't forget anything. Family vacations are exciting and often involve eye-catching scenery in unfamiliar areas. All of these factors can take a driver's attention away from the road. Before leaving home, designate one or two drivers for the trip. All drivers should thoroughly familiarize themselves with the destination spot as well as the best way to get there. Look over maps and other guide materials before the trip begins. 
learn the basic layout of the roads at the destination, as well as specific areas you might want to visit. I got the number for the babysitter in the hotel. I'm putting it in the glove compartment. That's a good idea. Keep maps, phone numbers for local agencies, such as the tourism office, and other resources in the glove compartment or other handy spot. Let's check in, and I'm going to sleep for an hour or two, and then we'll start exploring the city. Yeah, I'm okay? tired. Sure. Once you arrive at your destination, rest before you get behind the wheel again, especially if your drive was long. While sightseeing, take advantage of scenic stops. Park at historic sites and attractions instead of trying to see them from the road while driving. Be especially cautious of breathtaking scenery, such as the ocean, mountains, or natural landmarks. Keep in mind that other drivers may be distracted too. Don't let the excitement of the trip overshadow your responsibility as a driver. Others will be counting on you to make the trip safe as well as fun. Passengers can also help by making sure the driver is not distracted and by offering help when needed. In large cities, foreign countries, and other places where roads and traffic patterns are unfamiliar, consider using public transportation, such as cabs, trains, and buses. As drivers, we can never underestimate the responsibility of operating a vehicle. As we've seen, being distracted while driving is a very dangerous proposition. By using common sense and developing the habit of staying alert and focused, we can greatly decrease the possibility of injuring ourselves or others by being a distracted driver.